Hi everyone and welcome back to episode 16 of the Spring Boot Security course. Up until now we have stored our users in memory and I think it's time to step things up a little bit and use an actual database to store our user information. And we're going to do that because obviously this is how most applications keep their user information inside the database and also because um, it's really important to understand how this mechanism works in Spring Boot applications. Now, before we get started, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel in order to stay tuned for more courses that will sharpen your programming skills. In this episode, we are going to provide an overview of how you can integrate with Spring Security in order to save your user information in a database. And in the following episodes, we'll take each step and go in through the details in order to have a really good picture. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to do in order to store our user information in a database. The first step is we need to create our own user entity to store some information. You know? And besides the you know, username and password, we can store, I don't know, uh, roles, address, emails, whatever we need from our user inside the context of our own application. Then, of course, we need to store our user in a, in a database. So we need the user repository for that. And we'll create a JPA repository, but by all means, uh, in, in your application, you can create whatever uh, class you need. Then, this is the most important and sometimes tricky part. We need to link our user entity with the built-in classes in Spring Security. So we kind of need to link our user with the user details interface and we need to link the user repository that we create with the user details service interface. So, you know, Spring provides these interfaces like user details and user details service, and it uses these interfaces internally, but they don't have an actual implementation. So Spring Security gives us the flexibility to define our own user and to define how we want to retrieve it. And then we need to link our concrete implementations with these interfaces in order to make things work. So we have a lot of flexibility with Spring Security because we are not you know, restricted to use uh, any specific technology or any specific method. You know, it's our business how we handle this, but we just need to provide this uh, integration, you know, and we'll see how to do that in the future episodes. And finally, we need to integrate the database authentication in our configuration. Okay, so after we define our classes, after we make this link, we need to configure our application and tell it that you want to use, uh, you know, database authentication. And after we have these four steps done, then of course, our application is ready to, to be used. Just to make a simple analogy uh, of what it means to link with Spring Security, well, imagine that we have these two interfaces defined by the Spring Framework. And now, you know, we have to come with our own implementation. So probably we'll have a user entity that, we'll, uh, that we will store in our database. And then we need to provide some classes that implement this Spring interfaces. So we need to provide a class that will implement user details and a class that will implement the user details service. And once we create those classes and make this link, you know, then uh, we have successfully configured Spring Security to use, you know, database authentication in a way that we want. And if you look about it, it actually makes sense for them to, to do things like that because, you know, if you take user details interface, for example, it has a couple of properties like a username, password, uh, roles, authorities, and is active, you know? Just the basic things you need to, to set up an, an authentication mechanism. But in the context of our application, maybe we need to store emails addresses, uh, multiple addresses, uh, age, I don't know. Uh, we need to have more information on a user than uh, the ones that we need for authentication. So Spring gives us the possibility to define a user in every way that we want to and to store and retrieve it in using every method that uh, we need to. As long as we implement, you know, uh, user details and user details service. So. Uh, this was the overview. Let's um, deep dive into this and take one, take them one step at a time. 
before we close, I would like to remind you to subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for more software development tutorials that will sharpen your programming skills. Just go to the Romanian Coder YouTube page and click on the subscribe button. Also, if you found this video useful, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. If you have any comments, thoughts or ideas for new courses, just put them in the comment section at the end of this video because I would love to get feedback from you guys. You can also find me on Twitter at Romanian Coder and you can also check out my blog www.romaniancoder.com. Until next time, have a great day and write amazing code. Goodbye.